What's up techies, we're going to talk about the Galaxy S7 Edge along with the Nexus 6P. Some of the questions that I get about the Galaxy S7 or the 6P is whether if it's worth actually upgrading to the Galaxy S7 Edge if you have the Nexus 6P or actually any other device, even the Note 5. I want to focus on some of the differences or some of the comparisons that you can have between these two phones, the Nexus 6P and the Galaxy S7 Edge. Both have really good reasons to have either of the devices. If you're in the market to get a new phone and you're looking at the Galaxy S7 Edge or the Nexus 6P, I want to go over some of the reasons why you should get one or the other. Both of these phones are great in their own respects. Now obviously I'm going to be sharing some of my opinions and my perspectives about my experience with these two devices. So hopefully I can maybe answer some of the questions you might have with the differences between these two devices. First let's talk about the camera app on the Galaxy 7 Edge. To me that's probably one of the best features over any other device let alone the Nexus 6P. The camera app is really quick to access and it's also really quick to focus on a subject so you can just take that automatic picture so you don't miss those moments. Now I'm not saying that the Nexus 6P isn't fast either, but I seem to be able to focus more on my subject on the Galaxy S7 Edge versus the Nexus 6P or actually any other device that I've used. But that's just a very, very minor thing. Where the camera excels is actually in all the features that it involves. With the Galaxy S7 Edge or any other Samsung device, you have tons of features to go with. There's a few features that you could do within the Samsung camera app that you can't do with the Nexus 6P with the stock built-in app. One is the live broadcast to YouTube. That's a really cool feature that you can do on this phone. Slow motion, I know you can do it on the Nexus 6P, but it's just a little better in my opinion on this one. Hyperlapse, or better known as time lapse, you can actually do this within just this app alone. With the Nexus 6P, you gotta download a separate app to do a time lapse. And then lastly, you have pro features, which is really cool if you wanna get into the nitty gritty with all the camera aspects that you could get into. You can pretty much customize everything pretty close to what you could do on a DSLR camera. Just overall, the Galaxy S7 Edge camera app is better. You don't have to download any extra apps to get the job done. You have everything that you need within this one camera app. With the Nexus 6P, you can double tap the power button to get to the camera app as a shortcut. You can do that from the lock screen or the home screen, but sometimes on the lock screen, you gotta do it twice. If you're already on the home screen, you can double tap the power button, and it gets to it. As you can see there, the focus doesn't go as fast as the S7 Edge. I'm going to try to do this at the same time so you can try to see the differences between the fast focus. Alright, let's see if I can do this or not. <laughs> Alright, so you kind of see how the focus works with that. You barely even see it get focused because it works so fast on the 7 edge. But with this, like, it's got that automatic focus and it kind of takes towards the center area more. It's not that huge of a difference, but this one does go faster. That's just the facts. Like, the Galaxy S7 Edge definitely focuses fastest than any other camera that I've used on a smartphone. The camera on the Nexus 6P is very basic. As I mentioned, the Galaxy S7 Edge camera has many more The Samsung camera app has many more features involved. It's pretty simple to use on the Nexus 6P, so that is one pro, or if you're just interested in pictures and some minor videos here and there, this will get you by just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. The quality is really good. It's just I like more features than just the four that you see here listed. The other downside to the Nexus 6P is that you don't have OIS, which is optic image stabilization. There is some stabilization. It's like a digital stabilization, but it's just not nearly as good as the Galaxy S7 Edge. The other area that this phone excels in is Samsung Pay. It's better than Android Pay, better than Apple Pay, and it's awesome. You can just hold up your phone next to the payment terminal and it works. It's really nice. All you gotta do is basically, once you get to the terminal, you either use your pin or your fingerprint and that's it. It works so amazing. I love getting reactions from cashiers like, how did you do that? I, I've never seen that before. That's a first for me. Those are reactions that you get when you use your mobile payment. Now the Nexus 6P does have Android Pay support, but if you are a rooted user, you cannot use any form of mobile payment. In the past, developers have added support for Android Pay, but Android was quick to actually cover that up and get rid of support. Long story short, mobile payment has actually become a bigger deal to me than it has in the past. I really like using mobile payment when I have the opportunity to do so. If you're not going to root your Nexus 6P, it's not even a thing to worry about. But if you are a rooted user, that's something that you have to consider. Another cool feature about the Galaxy S7 Edge and the S7 is that it's water resistant. You can get this thing wet and you're not going to have to worry about it getting messed up. 
If you want to see my water test with the Galaxy S7 Edge, I'll leave a link down below in the description. It was a ton of fun to make. I really recommend that you check it out. Another difference between the Galaxy S7 Edge and the Nexus 6P is the battery. The Galaxy S7 Edge has a 3600mAh battery. The Nexus 6P has a 3450mAh battery. Both of these devices support big batteries. That's something that's really nice to see. However, I want to say I've gotten better battery life with the Galaxy 7 Edge. That's in comparison when I had the device in full use. I'm not talking about when I had the phone sitting around because the Nexus 6P will by far surpass the battery life over the Galaxy S7 Edge because of Android Doze. Android Doze is part of Android 6.0 Marshmallow, but the Nexus 6P handles Doze so much better than the Galaxy 7 Edge. But like I said, if you got your phone to full use all day, I'm going to get better battery life with the 7 Edge versus the Nexus 6P. If you like having an SD card or external memory, you're going to want to go with the 7 Edge. Otherwise, you're going to have to fork out just a little bit more money to get a higher capacity device from the Nexus 6P. I got the 64 gig version for the Nexus 6P. And that's about the amount of storage that I like. On the 7 Edge, I have a 32 gig internal memory and then I have 32 gigs for my external. So I still have 64 gigs. It's easier to upgrade to a memory card than it is just for a whole other device because of the differences that you can get on Amazon. Like a 32 gig card is only like 15 bucks. It's really cheap. Now, let me say this. The phone overall is a lot more expensive for the Galaxy 7 Edge outright versus the Nexus 6P. That's a big difference. So that's something that you have to consider even with pricing. I know we're talking about the storage right now, but that is a bigger deal. Because I'm willing to spend that kind of money, I can get a bigger storage device like with the Nexus 6P and still have money left over by the time I would have spent money on the 7 Edge. While we're on the topic of pricing, let's take a look what Amazon has these listed for. As far as the Galaxy S7 Edge goes, you can get it for about $737 on sale. Regular price is $899 on Amazon. The Nexus 6P, however, for a 64 gig model, you can get it for $548. For 128 gigs, you can get it for $650. If you want to go real cheap and you only need 32 gigs, you could get the device for about $500. That's a really good price for a premium device. Long story short, you're going to be spending a lot more money on this phone if you're going to buy it outright. If you're buying a phone outright, you might want to go with the Nexus 6P because you get a really good device for a lot less cost. My biggest complaint about Android 6.0 is that it lacks features. Not saying that it doesn't have a lot of features, but there's some that they should just have because it just makes life easier. Simple things like when you long press the power button, you only get power off. If you long press the Galaxy S7 Edge, you get more features. Like restart, that's one that I use all the time. The notification panel is actually a really good example of just getting to stuff easier without going through extra steps. One, when you pull down, you got nothing but notifications here and some icons here letting you know where your status is as far as your battery life goes and also Wi-Fi signal and so forth. When you pull it down on the Galaxy 7 Edge, you got a lot more features to choose from. One, you got your notifications, but you also got some of your features here that you could toggle on and off. Some of the ones I toggle on and off all the time would be Wi-Fi and then also the auto brightness, the slider and so forth. With one finger and one gesture, it's easier to get to what I want to get to with one action. With the Nexus 6P, I gotta drag it down again just to get to that stuff there. Granted, you can drag it down with two fingers and get it at one time, but you have to use two hands. If you're trying to go one-handed, you gotta do it twice. I don't know why they do the twice thing. That's just kind of aggravating to me. If I wanna go to airplane mode or turn on my hotspot, all I gotta do is just slide over here. It's better with one-handed use and one action. It's like you just get to where you can get to a lot quicker on the 7 Edge. Just to reiterate about the camera, you get a lot more features on the Galaxy 7 Edge versus the Nexus 6P's, the Android stock camera. And a couple of those things, like the differences that are just easier to get to, with the Galaxy 7 Edge, all you have to do is hit the record button here and it starts to record. You also get the option to capture a photo and pause. You got some more features right here that you could do within the app itself and while it's recording. With the Nexus 6P, you gotta slide over, wait for it to do it, and then start recording. You really don't get hardly any features while you're recording. You can tap the focus and that's about it. I wanna talk about the screens real quick. The screens are really good on both devices. They stand out in their own respects. However, in daylight, the S7 just looks better to me. It's easier to read the content on the screen. I also like the auto dimness here. It's easier to get to. If I wanna turn up full brightness, it's just easy to get to there. With the Nexus 6P, if you wanna to toggle with the brightness, you could do that with here. And I do like how this gets really dark. This gets actually darker. If you're in a really dark environment, you want it to be pretty dark. Like this one just gets a lot darker. If you're in the movie theaters, you don't wanna be disturbing anybody if you need to check something. And you could do that easier on here. It's extremely dark. It's the, one of the features I do like about the 6P. 
I mean, this screen on the 7 Edge does get pretty dark, but not nearly as dark. The Galaxy 7 Edge has a 5.5 inch screen, while the Nexus 6P has a 5.7 inch screen. I like the bigger screens, and I like how it looks. It's actually better for media consumption, in my opinion. It's just fun to watch. If you're into media consumption or playing games, the Nexus 6P is definitely the device for you. It is so much better playing on this versus the Galaxy 7 Edge. You get the speakers coming right at you, plus you get a nice big screen. It's just been a really fun device to play games on for one. Oh, I love this part. <laughs> That's such an awesome finishing move. Now, let's say you're watching a YouTube video. It is so much better to be able to hold the device one-handed like this and have the speakers coming at you. Comparing to the Galaxy S7 Edge, you got the speaker on the side right here, and it just presents a higher opportunity to have it covered up or muffled in some way. So then you have to take extra effort in order to make sure that you're not covering it up. Now you can hold it the other way to where the speaker's not on the side and you got no problems, but you still have the sound coming away from you. When you have front facing speakers, it's coming at you. Overall, when consuming media, the Nexus 6P is a better device to have versus the Galaxy 7 Edge. The Nexus 6P is obviously root friendly, which is a really good perk if you want to install custom ROMs or any other kind of modifications. You can do that with this phone. It's got an unlock bootloader and you're just able to customize everything about the phone if you want to. The Galaxy S7 Edge has a locked bootloader to where we don't know if that'll ever get unlocked. On top of it being a Verizon phone, I really have no hope of getting it rooted or have custom recovery. If you like that kind of stuff, it's just a no-brainer that you're going to want to get the Nexus 6P. If you like custom ROMs, be sure to check out my video series called ROM Series. You'll be able to see some ROMs that you can flash over on your Nexus 6P. With that said, I plan to continue that series really shortly, so be on the lookout for a new ROM video coming out soon. Another big perk about the Nexus 6P is that it works on all carriers. All you have to do is pop in your nano SIM card and you're rocking and ready to go. With the Galaxy S7 Edge, depending on what carrier that you're using, you're going to have to buy that specific one for that carrier for that network. Being able to add a phone on any network is a feature that I want to see on every phone these days. I want to have support across the board. It's just very nice to be able to have that kind of compatibility. Another characteristic about the Nexus 6P that I really like is the aluminum body build. It's really nice. I've got a custom skin made by dbrand over it right now, so you can't really see it. But underneath is that aluminum body. It looks really awesome. I love it. It's really just a build quality that I've grown to appreciate. I think it's my favorite build quality out of all the different materials that's available these days. The Galaxy S7 Edge has a glass back. While that's premium, I just don't like it as much as an aluminum or metal build. For one, the glass leaves a ton of fingerprints so you have to have a skin or a case on it, which I normally do anyway, so it's really just a minor grievance that I have with it. But a metal build is not nearly as easy to break as glass, and that's just kind of like a given. While I'm really thankful for the glass back versus the plastic that Samsung used to support, I just appreciate metal builds more. USB Type-C is the way of the future. That's what most companies are going towards, and I was kind of disappointed to see that the Galaxy S7 Edge didn't have USB-C. Now, it's probably because they wanted to keep it compatible with the Gear VR, but at the same time, I still wanted to see USB Type-C. USB Type-C offers fast data transfer and charging. Not to mention, it doesn't matter what side you put the plug into, it's going to fit. With the Galaxy S7 Edge not having USB Type-C is by no means a deal breaker, but it would have been nice to have USB Type-C on the Galaxy S7 Edge. Another non-deal breaker, but a nice feature to have on the Galaxy S7 Edge is wireless charging. Wireless charging is just nice and convenient to have. It's just nice to place the phone down and it begins to charge. You don't have to plug it in. You don't have to worry about wear and tear of that USB port. The Nexus 6P does not have wireless charging. While I said that's not a deal breaker to me, it might be a deal breaker to you. Another great characteristic about the Nexus 6P is that it comes with no bloatware whatsoever. However, with the Galaxy S7 Edge, there are bloatware apps involved. Now I have Horizon, so they have their apps, but they also come with other ones like this Go90, along with Slacker Radio. I just don't use those apps, so I end up disabling them, which is nice that you can do that, but at the same time, this kind of stuff just needs to be optional. Well, there you go. There are some of my thoughts about what you might consider if you're looking to get either one of these devices. Both are great phones. You can't go wrong with either one. 
but it's just really going to come down to preferences and how you're going to use the phone. Overall, you got to consider things like your camera, mobile payment, and things like that. List out your pros and cons of what you like about each device or what you don't like. See what comes out on top. I love using both of these devices. If I were to have to give up one of them, I know I'd miss one or the other. Take your fanboy caps off for a second and let me know down in the comments about what you think about these devices. If you were to choose which one, which one would you choose and why? If I were to choose which device to use, I would probably pick the Galaxy 7 Edge over the Nexus 6P. Although I would really miss the Nexus 6P, fortunately in my case, I'm keeping both of them. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you liked the video, please share it with your favorite social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos like this, and until then, stay techy.